me go ahead and start. We're filming and go, okay. I have a weird thing about Jeff Goldblum. He's some, he's very sexy. So is Sigourney Weaver. Went on a coffee date. He called his sister a bitch. And I was like, did you just call your sister a bitch? I gotta go. I gotta go and I got a bit left. Uh, in Norwegian, it's, yeah, I head for the Courtney. Oh yeah, it's a kid is cat. I mean, everybody smells sometimes, but take care of it, right? Let's smell good together and then get all sweaty together. <laughs> A few months after COVID hit, I decided to get back online and start dating again. So I thought, well, why not? You know? <laughs> Let's make it challenging extra. Hello, my name is Courtney Michelle. I'm 49 years old. I do hair for a living. I'm also a linguist. I speak Norwegian, German, French, and Spanish. I love to ski. I have two dogs and a cat and a fish tank. And I'm looking for love. A lot of my friends tell me I'm sweet. They also, they call me Sweet Courtney. I would assume that means I'm kind and nice. I like to help people. So my bucket list. Well, I definitely, I love to travel. I've traveled a lot and I want to travel some more. I want to visit six out of the seven continents. I don't need to go to Antarctica, but I usually do an international trip once or twice a year when there's not a pandemic on. I would like to learn some more languages. I speak a couple of languages, so um, whenever I visit a, a foreign country, I like to be able to speak a little bit of the language. I can get by in most uh, Western European languages. Swedish is mutually intelligible with Norwegian. Uh, I can read a little Italian, Dutch, I went to Brazil one time and sort of cobbled together this French-Spanish thing and got by fairly well. I consider it a gift of mine that I can uh, learn other languages. It really makes traveling and connecting with other people a whole different level of experience because people appreciate it when you try to speak their language. Oh, I really like coffee for a first date. A day date, coffee, just something really casual and limited on time just to see how you'd like someone and assess whether you have good chemistry or not. Nothing, it's nothing too committed and it's easy and light. I've been on a couple of different apps for the last about two years. I've been using Bumble a lot lately. One experience that I find very confusing is that a lot of people on those apps don't ask questions. So I, I'm not sure how they expect to get to know people without asking questions. Uh, I find, you know, I ask a lot of questions, they might answer it and not write back another question. I even put in my profile, hint, ask questions. I actually have three questions I ask myself when I'm uh, on a first date. Would I rather be anywhere else but here? And that one is usually pretty easy because I'm self-entertaining and, and coffee's an hour or so and so, but sometimes I've been on a date and I'm like, I'd rather be on my couch watching Netflix. So that's a no. And then the other one is, uh, do I feel like reaching out and touching the person? And there've been times that I've really thought I've intellectually co connected with someone and, and, but I just don't want to reach out and touch them. And I look, I, I look at their neck or their face or their hands. I like hands too, you know, how they look. and. And then back to smell. So how they smell, you know, is there anything about a breath or a body smell? Sometimes it's hard to do because you have to get close to someone. So I try to give a little hug at the end and give a little whiff and you know, see how they smell. I mean, there've been people who even went, even after they've worked out and sweaty, I still think they smell amazing. And that's just, that's what I'm looking for. But you can't tell until we, until we meet in person. So let's have coffee let's, and then we'll hug and I'll sniff you and yeah. <laughs> Um, let's see, what are some of my flaws? I don't know, I've been working on myself a lot lately, so I'm trying to work on those. Uh, I do worry, and uh, that I, I think that's a flaw because it causes me suffering. I've been working a lot on trying to limit my own suffering. Well, I've been working on you know, thoughts that your mind creates that tell a story that may or may not be true. You can jump to a conclusion very easily. I'm, I don't think I'm that judgmental, but I jump to conclusions pretty quickly. And I do that a lot about myself. Yeah, worrying and, and stressing out about, about some things that I can't control is something I would like to work on. I'm looking for a relationship, a committed, 
monogamous relationship. My ideal partner would be someone who has their own life, has ideally owns a house, has their stuff together, has a decent credit score, <laughs> doesn't have a lot of drama or baggage. I mean, we all come with we all come with stuff, but is working on their stuff. Good communication is definitely a must have. And someone who's thoughtful and kind, likes animals, and is a good-hearted person. You have to be willing to try new things and get out there and also be vulnerable. So if someone's closed off and not emotionally available, then that's difficult and that doesn't seem to last very long. The whole pandemic and vaccinations really bring out uh, what our social contract with each other is. I believe it's a social obligation to be vaccinated. And I am vaccinated and boosted. I prefer that and would like someone to be vaccinated. And I actually won't go on a date with someone if they're not. So that's important to me. And I think it tells a lot about someone if they choose to do that or not. Age is not necessarily important to me. I have been dating a little younger than myself lately because just for fun. <laughs> so any range of person, and height is also not necessarily a factor. I'm, I'm very tall, I'm 5'10". Someone needs to be confident. If they're shorter than I am, I don't mind at all, but uh, they have to be confident enough to date me. I also kind of stand out in public, it seems. People notice me, so if you're gonna be with me, you have to be okay with that. So someone who's jealous or insecure is not gonna work. I do, I do like I do like sex. I like physical contact. Um, like I said before, I like holding hands, and I th I like just caresses. I guess you say I'm confident in bed. Like I I know what to ask for. I know how to direct someone to <laughs> help me out and uh, have fun together. You know, it's it's like playtime for adults, right? So let's have fun. Let's. I'm not that inhibited about things. I. I just want to have a good time. Historically, women have not been able to say like, I want, I, I want physical touch or I like sex or, and I think it's really important to be like, yeah, I, 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 I do. And um, I actually dated someone last year who was like, just it wasn't working well in the physical realm. And so it didn't last very long. I have actually not dated very many people with kids. Um, I've dated a few people with grown kids, but smaller children, like younger children. I'm not really interested in dating someone with younger children. I've thought about maybe teenagers might be okay because they're already sort of on their way and definitely college age kids are out of the house, like that's okay. But younger kids like tweens or under is just not really, not really for me. I really like just to how are you? How's your day? It's really nice to hear on a regular basis. Like some people date and they're like, oh, don't bother me. Or I really like a little bit of check-in every day. And it doesn't have to be for too long, but just good morning. How are you? And good night. I just really find that um, touching. And that leads to a connection. And that's what I really want. I want uh, an intimate connection and intimate on all kinds of levels, like physical, emotional, intellectual and looking for someone to really want to get to know me simple things and complex things i also am looking for a sense of trust i think you have to have trust to have intimacy and i really want that bond with someone my book club did the love languages book a couple of times ago physical touch physical touch is very important words of affirmation and quality time when someone like just stops by to say hi or sends me a text and says I'm thinking of you, that to me just makes me feel so loved. And that can be with friends and lovers. So that's why I like the little, you know, the, the good morning and the, the little how are, how is your day kind of uh, communication. It seems that I like to give acts of service. I like to show up for people and that seems to make others feel good and I like to listen and be available to people. My whole job is actually acts of service. I make people feel beautiful and then they give me words of affirmation like, oh, that looks perfect, that's exactly what I wanted. And it's a very good environment for me for working. So that works well for me. Have I been in love before? I have been in love before, I, th I think a couple of times and definitely to different degrees and with different intensity and I'm, 
looking to fall in love again. I don't really believe there's only one soulmate or anything like that. I think you can love different people in different ways with different degrees of intensity. I, I think that might fade sometimes. Um, and so what to cultivate is that intimacy and that emotional connection that you can, that you can maintain over time. I would, I would love to have a, a long-term relationship. I, there's a lot of different types of love, but I think in general it is caring about another person or being more than you care about yourself um, and wanting that person or being to be happy and feel good and be fulfilled and that you would be willing to sacrifice your own fulfillment a little bit. Uh, you also have to love yourself, I think to be able to have a successful relationship. Yeah, I think love is it's also wanting to give somebody something they, they can't necessarily give, give for themselves. If two individuals are fairly whole and healthy uh, mentally and emotionally, then they can add more together and be better together. And that's what I'm looking for. And so I'd like to, I want somebody to love and I want to be loved. So, hello, potential partner. Um, I'm fun and funny and loving and willing to give all that I have to uh, someone who uh, is deserving of love and who would like to love me back. I'm up for adventure. I'm spontaneous. I'm also very independent and I have my stuff together. So I don't feel like I need to be completed by someone else. I would like companionship as an enhancement to my life. And I have a great life, I have a great career, I have great friends. I just want that additional romance and fun and intimacy in my life. So, so let me know, let's go have coffee. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm a cat, should I read right? <laughs> my friends say I am. If you've got your stuff together, and you smell good, <laughs> uh, then let's go have some fun. Yeah. <laughs> I've got to tell you, baby, I'm tired of walking these streets alone. On my own. And I know I've got to reach out to you to mix your spirit.